In this video we will deal with the Stefan Boltzmann law, which states that in thermal equilibrium the radiant power of an object is proportional to the fourth power of the temperature and directly proportional to its surface area. We will also derive Kirchhoff's law of radiation, which states that in thermal equilibrium the absorbed power of an object is equal to its emitted power. So let's get started. Blackbody radiation. In the video on blackbody radiation it has already been explained in detail why every object emits radiation above absolute zero. This radiation is also called thermal radiation. Thermal radiation is caused by the oscillations of atoms that emit electromagnetic waves. Thermal radiation can not only be proven by the fact that it is able to heat other objects, as one could derive from the term thermal radiation. At sufficiently high temperatures, the radiated wavelength spectrum shifts into the visible range and can thus be observed directly by the human eye. The reddish glow of a heated metal bar is, for example, the result of such a visible thermal radiation. The visible glow of the filament of a light bulb at over 3000 degrees Celsius is also a typical example which can be traced back to the phenomenon of thermal radiation. More than 90% of the energy is radiated in the non-visible infrared range and can therefore only be perceived as heat. The remaining part, however, is in the visible wavelength spectrum and can be directly observed as a yellowish glow. A small part is also radiated as ultraviolet light. Radiant power. As a glowing steel block or a light bulb clearly shows, emitting radiation is obviously associated with emitting energy. How much radiant energy an object emits per unit time, that means how high its radiant power is, depends mainly on the temperature, but also on the surface area of the emitting body as well as on the radiative property of the body, the so-called emissivity. Note that the radiant power, also called radiant flux, does not only refer to the thermal energy in the infrared spectrum or to the radiated energy in the visible wavelength range, but to the entire energetic radiation that a body emits. If, for example, an incandescent light bulb is operated at low current, the temperature of the filament is correspondingly low. The light bulb does not only glow less, but it also does not heat up as much. Overall, the radiant power is relatively low at low temperatures. With a large current, on the other hand, the filament heats up strongly and the temperature is high. It then not only glows intensely yellow, but also radiates infrared radiation to a high degree which is clearly noticeable as heat. The higher the temperature of a body, the higher the radiant power is. Note, the fact that the filament is weakly reddish at low temperature and bright yellow at high temperature is due to the wavelength spectrum emitted, which shifts to the yellowish range with increasing temperature. For more information, see the video on blackbody radiation. Stefan Boltzmann Law Besides the temperature, the area of the surface of the radiating body also influences the radiant flux. The larger the surface, the more atoms can oscillate and emit radiation. Note that radiation emitted by the atoms inside the body is directly reabsorbed by the surrounding atoms. Thus only the atoms on the surface are relevant for the radiation of the electromagnetic waves. If the surface is twice as large, the radiant power should therefore be twice as high. More detailed studies by the physicists Joseph Stefan and Ludwig Boltzmann at the end of the 19th century showed that the radiant power is indeed directly proportional to the surface area of the emitting object. The influence of temperature on radiant power, on the other hand, is far greater. It increases with the fourth power of the absolute temperature. A doubling of the temperature from, for example, 1000 Kelvin to 2000 Kelvin thus increases the radiant power by a factor of 16. Thus, for a radiating object, the radiant power is therefore determined by the given law. This law is also known as Stefan Boltzmann law. So the Stefan Boltzmann law states that the radiant power of an object in thermal equilibrium is proportional to the fourth power of temperature and directly proportional to its surface area. By introducing a proportionality factor sigma, the Stefan Boltzmann law can be formulated quantitatively as given. This constant is called the Stefan Boltzmann constant and is a universal constant. This means in particular that this constant does not depend on the material of the radiating object. However, this formula is only valid for an ideal black body, which absorbs all radiation.
Why a black body is not only a perfect absorber of radiation, but also a perfect emitter, we will explain in more detail later. For real objects, which are not ideal black bodies, the radiant power is lower. This is taken into account with a unitless factor, the so called emissivity epsilon. The emissivity indicates how high the radiant power of the real object is compared to an ideal black body. Many non metallic objects have an emissivity above 0.9 and thus radiate with more than 90% of the power of a black body. These objects can therefore be considered, to a very good approximation, as black bodies with respect to their emitted radiation. If the radiant power of an object is related to its surface area, then one also speaks of the so-called intensity. In a physical sense, intensity means a power surface density. The intensity indicates the magnitude of the radiant power emitted per unit area. Kirchhoff's Law of Thermal Radiation In the following a blackbody is considered, which is irradiated by a heat lamp. By definition, the blackbody will absorb all incident radiation. The absorbed energy leads to an increase in temperature, and the blackbody begins to emit more and more radiation. Finally, over time, a thermal equilibrium will be reached in which the temperature no longer rises. In thermodynamic equilibrium, the radiant power emitted must therefore be the same as the absorbed radiant power. In the same way as the emitted radiant power increases with the fourth power of the temperature, the absorbed radiant power must also increase with the fourth power of the temperature. Otherwise there would be no thermal equilibrium. The law with which an ideal blackbody emits radiation according to the Stefan Boltzmann law must therefore also apply to the absorbed radiation in thermal equilibrium. Let us now consider a real body which has a lower radiant power than an ideal black body. As already explained, this is expressed by the emissivity. Furthermore, for real objects, a certain part of the incident radiation is reflected and not completely absorbed as in the case of black bodies. Thus, the absorbed radiant power of a real body will be lower by a certain factor than that of an ideal black body. In analogy to the emissivity, this factor alpha describes the absorbed portion of the incident radiation and is referred to as absorptivity. Thus, the absorptivity refers to the effectiveness with which radiation is absorbed by a real object compared to an ideal black body. The radiation equilibrium between emitted radiation and absorbed radiation basically applies to every body in thermal equilibrium, including non-ideal black bodies that do not radiate at maximum power. After all, a constant temperature and thus a thermal equilibrium will be reached for every object after a certain time, in which emission and absorption must take place to the same extent. This law is also called Kirchhoff's law of radiation. According to Kirchhoff's law of radiation, the emitted radiant power in thermal equilibrium is just as high as the absorbed radiant power. A real body that has a lower absorption power than an ideal black body will therefore also have a lower emission power to the same extent. However, this also means that a body that absorbs to the maximum also emits to the maximum. A black body is therefore not only an ideal absorber of radiation, but also a perfect emitter. For real objects, a purely formal differentiation is made between absorptivity and emissivity, but in thermal equilibrium this distinction is obsolete because both values are identical according to Kirchhoff's law of radiation. To show this, we equate the respective formulas for the absorption power and the emission power in thermal equilibrium. So note that in thermal equilibrium, the absorptivity is equal to the emissivity. Gray bodies the diagram shows the emitted wavelength spectrum of an ideal blackbody at a temperature of 2000 Kelvin. Real bodies, on the other hand, have a lower emission power. If this reduced power is independent of the wavelength, then such an radiator is also called a gray body. Gray bodies therefore have an absorptivity or emissivity that is constant over the entire wavelength spectrum. In this case, the curve of the spectral distribution is reduced by a constant factor. In some cases, however, a body will absorb or emit radiation to different degrees depending on the wavelength. The absorptivity or emissivity then depends on the wavelength. Such bodies are called selective absorbers or selective radiators. We hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.